In this video, I'm going to be improving the retrofit query, or I guess the response of the query, using a something that the best practice guide recommends in the architecture section of the documentation. So if you go to this link here, the Jetpack Docs guide section of the developer documentation, and you scroll down to this little best practices section here, this is something that they recommend adding to all of your requests, basically. Uh, this is This is the class, or this is, uh, a similar class that we're, this is similar to the class that we're going to be building in this video. It's a generic class that contains data and status about loading some data. So basically there's uh, some status object where you define different statuses of the requests. In this case, there's success, error, and loading. Uh, T is a generic data type for the class. So T, whatever the data is gonna be retrieved from the request. In our case, that's the user object. We're retrieving a user object. Uh, and then um, any message that you might want to add to the response also. So like if there's an error, if you take a look at the error case here, it also includes a message. But uh, anyway, I don't want to talk too much about it in the documentation here. Let's actually build it and I'll, and I'll walk through it as we, as we build it. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm not going to type out the whole thing live because it's, it's a generic class. I don't really think there's a point. I'm, it would be mostly just copying it anyway. So I'm going to go to the, the code for the the course you can go to the master branch or go to the branch for this particular video uh, and go to the network no ui package go into auth and you want to copy this auth resource class right here so i'm going into auth resource and i'm just going to copy this entire thing and uh, i'm going to paste it into our project and i'm going to talk about it so i'm closing both those i'm going to go into the ui package into the auth package create a new java class and this is going to be called auth resource and now i'm hovering over that and i'm pasting in that auth resource class and i'm going to walk through this and talk about it so that uh, you you understand what's going on so i'm just importing all of those all those imports and there we go so basically all this is is it's a wrapper class so it's a class that wraps around some type of t so it's going to be any type in our case that's going to be the user object so it's going to wrap around a user object uh, and then you have access to some more things, I guess, some supplementary uh, states and objects that you can add to it that will help us uh, as we make the requests. And it's not really going to make a lot of sense to you, I think, if I just talk through it. I think probably uh, I'm just going to give a brief explanation and then we're going to get into the example. And uh, then you'll really understand what's going on here. So this auth status object is actually defined at the bottom of the class here. It's in just an enum, it says authenticated, error, loading, or not authenticated. So these are essentially the four different states that a request can have when we're trying to authenticate the user. So a user can either be authenticated, that's like, uh, yes, the user was authenticated, it was successful, good. Uh, if there was an error, that's a state. If it's loading, so if the request is being made, if it's currently in progress, that would be the loading status. And then there's also not authenticated. So that's what will happen when a user uh, logs out, for example. The status will get set to not authenticated, and then we can redirect them to wherever we need to. And then we just have a couple kind of convenience methods here for making uh, setting the objects easier. So authenticated is just sets that status to authenticated. Error will automatically set an error. Loading is loading. Logout is not authenticated. Uh, and then there's various objects being passed to them. So just, uh, just kind of take this for what it is for now. Now we're going to use it and it's going to make a, a lot more sense to you. But also, once again, I should, I should mention, I know I mentioned this in my previous video, I talk about this class in detail in my local database cache with REST API course on my website. So konawithmitch.com, you can go to courses or just scroll down to the local database cache with REST API. I talk about the MVVM architecture and all of the best practices that they recommend using in the architecture guide section of the documentation. So if you want more information on MVVM, these wrapper classes, all this kind of stuff, definitely watch that course. Uh, this course is focused on Dagger, so I'm not going to get into detail on that. All right, so let's go into the view model and we need to make some changes. So I'm going to auth view model and I'm going to change this to an auth resource object and it wraps around a user object. Now, obviously this is going to give us some errors because we've made some changes. Uh, first, I'm just going to change this to return that data type. And now we're going to make some changes in our authenticate with, with ID method uh, since we now have that wrapper. So the first thing I want to do is I want to set that loading status. So I want to go auth user dot set value 
and I want to do auth resource dot loading and set the data to null. Uh, it's going to give me an error because I need to pass a type there. So why am I doing that? I'm doing that because uh, that's going to tell the UI that a request is attempting to be made. So uh, when the loading status gets set, then I want to show the progress bar basically. Uh, and uh, actually, originally I was going to do the view model first, but it might be better to do the activity first. That way you can see uh, kind of how this is working. So I'm going to delete this, this uh, the observer in the subscribe observers method, and I'm going to uh, kind of set up the activity. And then we'll go back to the view model and set that up. So the first step is I need to add a progress bar. So private progress bar, progress bar. I need to attach that to an ID. So progress bar equals find view by ID or ID dot r.id.progress bar and now I need to go into our subscribe observers method and set a new observer so observe user observe this is a lifecycle owner new observer and now we have access to this auth resource object that's wrapped around a user object so what do we want to do in here well first I need to check to make sure the auth resource object is not null so if it's not null then we can actually do something with it uh, and now what I want to do is I want to do auth resource dot get the uh, get the status and I want to switch that. So I want to check what the status is. So there's four different statuses. There's uh, there's loading, which is the first one. So I'll just add a break. Uh, the second one, I'll just write out all four actually. So two, three, four. Uh, the second one is going to be authenticated. The third one is going to be error. And the last one is going to be not authenticated. So these are those four statuses that I just told you about. So the beautiful thing about this is when I set a value inside the view model, uh, the unchanged method will trigger if the status changes, and then we can update the UI basically. So I'm going to create a method for showing the progress bar. So private uh, private void show progress bar, and that's going to take a boolean. So boolean. Uh, is showing I'll say if uh, if it is showing actually I think the source code says is visible so I need to stay consistent so is visible so if it's visible then I want to show the progress bar so progress bar set visibility view dot visible if it's not then I want to do progress bar set visibility view dot gone now I'm going to use this method up here inside of our different states so in this case, if it's loading, if it has a loading status, then I want to show that progress bar. Uh, if it's authenticated, if we're authenticated, I want to not show the progress bar. That means the request is done. Uh, if there's an error, I want to also not show the progress bar. That means the request is done. And if they're, they are not authenticated, again, we don't want to show the progress bar. So basically, the only time I want to show the progress bar is if it's assigned a loading status. Uh, if it's authenticated, I just want to... Uh, let let the I want to know that it's actually authenticated so I'll say like login success and just write user auth resource dot data to get that user object and then get email uh, if there's an error I want to actually tell the user that something went wrong so I can write a toast uh, and then inside here I can add that object so auth resource dot get the message because if there's an error message it's going to be assigned as a message uh, I go to the next line, plus I can do uh, did you enter a number between 0, or actually it would be 1 and 10. Because remember, there's only 10 users, and it has to be a number between 1 and 10. Uh, I just want to show that toast, so that's fine. And the not authenticated one, we won't worry about that yet. So this, these are the different statuses that can be assigned to the request. It can either be loading, which is going to happen right away, because right now, right away I'm setting it to a loading status, and now we're going to write in the other code that's required for authenticated, error, and not authenticated. So I'm going to alter this. So we're going to add some more, some more Rx Java stuff here. So I'm going to do on error return. Uh, so this is going to be called basically is if there's an error. I'm passing new function, and this is what I want to happen if something goes wrong if there's an error. So I'm going to create an, uh, kind of a dummy user object. I'll call it error user equals new user. And I want to set error user's ID to negative one. And then I want to pass that error user to the next method, the next Rx method, the next op operator, sorry. And that's going to be the map operator. I'm going to go new function. That's going to 
that's going to receive this error user if there is an error. But if there isn't an error, then it's just going to receive the regular old user object. Or it's going to re receive the, um, it's actually going to receive the auth user object. So I need to actually uh, wrap this auth, auth resource. I need to wrap that around. And now come down into the map function. And if the user ID equals negative one, that means we have a problem. Whoops, if, if it uh, get ID equals negative one, that means we have a problem. If user dot get ID equals negative one. Uh, so then we want to return auth resource dot error. I want to pass uh, a message. So whatever the error message is, could not authenticate. That should be fine. And pass the null data. You need to specify a user object or it'll give me a warning there. Uh, that should be fine. I'm not sure why that's giving me an error uh, because this is returning the wrong type. This needs to return an auth, auth resource user object. And that means that this also needs to be an auth resource user object. There we go. Uh, so if, if it's not uh, negative one, that means everything is fine. And in that case, we want to return auth resource dot authenticate and pass that user object. Uh, so this is going to seem very confusing to you if you don't know Rx Java, just like I said. But if you want more information, I have a free Rx Java course, which I highly recommend checking out. Now the last step kind of down here is this, I just need to add the auth resource wrapper to this section. Uh, the, the observer would change too, so I need to change that. And there we go. So that is going to be all the changes that we need. For those of you who don't know Rx Java, like I said, this is going to be pretty much just magic to you. Uh, so I really recommend watching my free oops, Rx Java course on my website. I also recommend watching my local database cache course. But basically, I'll just kind of run through the logic here just to kind of you know give you a, a quick breakdown. So we're doing the same thing we did before. We're returning the flowable user object. Uh, the only difference here is I've, I've applied two Rx operators. The first one here is instead of calling on error. So this is just if an error happens, error happens basically. Uh, if an error happens, this is what happens. I'm gonna create this user error user object, set its ID to negative one and then return it. And the next operator will either receive this error user if there was an error. If, it, if there was no error, it's just gonna return the user object from the API. In which case it applies a function to it using the map operator. What that function does is if the user ID is negative one, or if there was an error, it returns an error, uh, an auth resource object of type error. So it's just kind of the error case basically of the auth resource class. So that's gonna be uh, this case right here. If there is no error, then it just returns an auth resource uh, object with an authenticated status. So if you go into auth resource and you go to the authenticated static method, it's gonna be that one right there. It returns that one. Basically it means that everything worked pretty much and it returns that, um, which is then uh, the regular process that we went through before happens. So you add the source, you attach the observer, the value gets set, and then the observers are updated in the UI. So, uh, so if we run this now, what's gonna happen is the progress bar will show because the loading status gets set right here. Um, and then if it's successful or if it fails, the loading status will be over, the progress bar will be hidden, and we'll either get a successful message or we'll get an error. That's what will happen. So let's run that and take a look. And uh, like I said, the advantage of, of adding a wrapper class like this is you get access to, you can use different statuses and you can use those different statuses to uh, provide information to your users basically. So let me try and just log in with number five. There's the progress bar, it then was hidden. Let's see the log output and see if it was successful. So we have login success and you're successfully logged in. So everything was is working as we expect. Uh, just out of curiosity, I'm, I'm gonna turn off the network. So I'm gonna turn on airplane mode. Uh, turn on airplane mode. I don't know what's going on with the phone. I guess I can't turn on airplane mode. I'll just, uh, oh, it's probably because I didn't set up this phone yet. It's like a new emulator owner. There, turn that off. Okay, so the network's off now. I'll just try and authenticate with a user. 
and we get an error. So there's could not authenticate, did you enter a number between one and 10? So in that case, we actually have our error case uh, working correctly. So that's the kind of the one of the advantages of using a wrapper class like this. You can have access to different statuses for showing a progress bar, hiding a progress bar, what to do if they got, get authenticated, what to do if there's an error, and then later we'll see uh, this not authenticated status in action also. So in the next video, or the next kind of step, I'm not sure about the next video, but the next step is going to be starting to build this session manager. So this is going to be something that persists as long as the application is alive, and it's going to hold information on that authenticated user. So if they're authenticated, it will, know, it will hold some kind of you know, data that lets us know that that user is authenticated. If they're not, then they won't be, and they'll be you know, redirected back to the login screen. But uh, lots of stuff to do. I'll see you in that next video.